Hi, my name is Kyle Kaloje, and today I'm going to be discussing complex whole algorithms. To start, we'll be diving into complex polygons. All interior angles of a complex polygon are less than or equal to 180 degrees. We'll note that a strict complex polygon needs all angles less than 180 degrees. And then a complex polygon has all line segments from two vertices stay within its boundaries. So if we were to draw a line, the complex polygon stays within it. On the right, it doesn't. So as a, a quick little look ahead to how complex whole algorithms work, see if we were to delete both of those and add that, then we would have a convex polygon. In this case, it would be creating the convex whole of that shape. So I included the formal definition there, but to simplify what a convex whole is, I'm going to look at the rubber band and nail example. So let's say that nails were all the data points. So you'd be having a rubber band that would, if you stretched it so that it would encompass all the data points, and then you were to start relaxing it until it closed, it touched the nails or the data points, it would come around all the hole points, in which case, in that case, it would form the convex hole. Um, I also included some equivalent definitions there. If you see those, those are the same as a convex hole. Next, uh, look at some of the algorithms. So I listed a lot of the different algorithms on the left, including Jarvis's March, Gram Scan, Quick Hole, Divide and Conquer, Monotone Chain, Chan's algorithm. But specifically for this presentation, we're going to be getting a deeper dive into Jarvis's March and Gram Scan, as those are the two that I personally looked at and implemented. And I included a link to my GitHub page at the uh, bottom of this slide if you would like to check that out. For Jarvis's March, you're going to start with an extreme point that will be in the convex hole. And the GIF on the right, you're, it starts with the leftmost point. And using this point as the point of reference, you're going to add a point or the point that is leftmost or most counterclockwise from this point. You're gonna repeat that until you're at the initial point. Overall, this algorithm has a time complexity of O of n times h, in which case n is the number of input points and h is the number of hole points. This is because at all the different hole points, you have to compare to all the different data points to see which one is the most counterclockwise. In the worst case, if all of the data points are hole points, then you'd get a time complexity of O of n squared. Next, we're going to be looking at Gram Scan. So Gram Scan, similar to Jarvis's March, starts with a point known to be on the convex hole. And this GIF on the right, it starts with the bottommost point. Then you're gonna sort the points in angular order around this point, such that it would then proceed counterclockwise. You're gonna to add to the hole of the previous current and next point form a counterclockwise orientation. So looking at the image on the left at the bottom, see PCN forms a counterclockwise orientation. So that would be accepted and added to the hole. If you were to delete a chain of vertices from the whole of previous current and next, you now form a counterclockwise orientation. So looking at the middle image at the bottom, you see PCN form a clockwise orientation. You're going to have to delete vertices until you get PCN forming a counterclockwise orientation. Luckily, in this case, you only have to delete one and you go to the PCN image on the right, and that is counterclockwise, and that would then be added to the whole. Overall, this has a time complexity of O of n log n, which n equals the number of inputs because of the sorting required. Now we're going to look at Jarvis's March for Scram Scan. So Jarvis's March outperforms Scram Scan in terms of time versus number of elements. This is because in using a randomly generated data set, there are a lot of data points, but only a few number of whole points. And this works in Jarvis's March advantage. You may be asking, how can I use convex whole algorithms? First off, convex whole algorithms are extremely important in combinational geometry as they can be used in shape detection or 
detecting the extent of a data set. Now, specifically looking at collision detection and path planning, we're going to look at the image on the right. Let's say you had a robot starting at point S and you wanted to go to point T. You can't go through the obstacle, you have to go around it. So the fastest path from point S to point T would be along one of the convex hole paths on the top or bottom. Additionally, convex hole algorithms can be used in, as I mentioned earlier, shape analysis and detection, nuclear leak evacuation, seeing how far that the nuclear leak radiation has spread, um, looking today at coronavirus, looking at the extent of coronavirus, the spread of it. And I included a link at the bottom of this cooking example. I thought it was a quite abnormal and atypical example of convex hole algorithms and points out to just the large extent of how convex holograms can be applied to our world today.